All right, so I just bought an RTX 4070 with my own money. This wasn't sent to me, and my old card was an RTX 3070. And in this video, I'm gonna try and help you figure out if you should upgrade from your trusty 3070 to a 4070. And if I think it's worth that $600 price tag as someone that actually did pay it. So yeah, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe, and I don't wanna waste none of your time, so let's get right into the video. All right, so first, I wanna just show you the two cards that I do have. I do still have my 3070, which is right here. It is an EVGA RTX 3070, uh, the For the Win 3 model. As you can see, it says right there, For the Win 3. Um, very awesome card, but my 4070, which I'm not gonna take out of my case, I'll just show you some really nice B-roll of it with it in my computer. It is the ASUS, I don't actually remember the exact name of it, ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4070. 12 gig so yeah but first in this video i'm not going to go showing you a bunch of different charts comparing it to a bunch of different cards because i don't have a bunch of different cards and i feel like every other review video has already done that so i'm going to just quickly go over the specs uh price and uh, how it performs compared to the 3070 and then we'll get into the features and then my opinion on whether or not you should buy it so yeah now i will put an image on my screen that shows you the entire full list of specs but i'm just going to go over the ones that you got to know uh, it has 5888 cuda cores which is the same as the 3070 here which is weird i don't think i've ever seen a nvidia card like from one generation to another have the same amount of cuda cores usually it's always a you know decent in increase but that's okay because it is getting its really big jump in performance from the uh increase in megahertz so uh, the 3070 here would get about um at like a at boost clock around 1800 megahertz and the 4070 here is getting all the way up to around uh, 2800 megahertz so that's that's a really big increase and it also has 12 gigabytes of vram which is amazing we finally have a increase in vram i don't i don't know if you'll know this but the 70 class series of cards has had 8 gigabytes of vram i think from the 1070 the 1070 had 8 gigs uh the 2070 had 8 gigs so did the 3070 and we're finally getting an increase and the reason this is so good is because i mean eight gigabytes really ain't cutting it nowadays i mean yeah a couple of years ago it was it would pretty much get you by through pretty much anything but nowadays like with new game releases like hogwarts legacy um the last of us part one pc and there's probably some others out there eight gigabytes really ain't enough that's really where your bottleneck is coming from and it's really nice to have an increase in VRAM, four whole gigs. That's pretty good in my opinion. And the last thing we'll talk about in terms of specifications is the power draw. Uh, this card draws about 200 watts of power is what it's rated for on NVIDIA's website. Although while gaming, I was getting right around 170 to 200 watts, which is what it's rated for. That's really good. That's really good, especially compared to the 3070 right here. My 3070 was pulling right around, well, it depends because not every game would fully utilize it. But if it was a game that fully utilized my 3070, it was getting between 240 and 260 watts. And it also is really nice for people that are upgrading from a 3070 is you won't have to upgrade your power supply. Now, in terms of how it performs in game, I'm not gonna show you a bunch of charts that compare the 4070 against a bunch of different cards. I'm just gonna tell you how it performs against the 3070. And when compared to the 3070, you're getting about a 25 to 35% increase in performance. And that's gonna be your like most of the time while, while you're playing games. But there are a few games, mainly the ones that have uh, DLSS frame generation, which we'll talk about that in just a minute here. Um, with games that have frame gen, you're gonna get around a 50% increase just because the 4070 can make frames. <laughs> so that, that that's why. And there also were some games that were in that 50% region uh, that were there only because the 3070 here was running out of VRAM. Any game where the 3070 was running out of VRAM but the 4070 wasn't, uh, you were getting a really big bump in it or a really big bump in performance. But for the most part, for the most part, you're gonna get right around 25 to 35% increase, which is not bad. Uh, if we if we're just looking at performance, but when we're looking at price to performance, that's not good. Uh, 25 to 35 percent with a hundred dollar increase, not that good, not that good. Now, if they didn't increase this card by a hundred bucks, that would be pretty darn good, I would say. But since they increased it by a hundred bucks, I mean, it's it's not bad. But let's talk features because this is where Nvidia, I feel like, is really trying to sell you on this card because uh, of DLSS three. That's the biggest feature here. And first, let me tell you what it is. Uh, so DLSS Free 3, I think is pretty similar to DLSS 2, except for the addition of frame generation. Frame generation is just where the AI tensor cores in the 4070, which are on their fourth generation now, 
that's one thing they specify on their website is like the new generation of tensor cores in uh, uh, ray tracing cores cores <laughs> but when you're playing a game it uses those ai tensor cores to look at a frame that was just shown on screen and then they look at the one that's just about to be shown on screen and they compare the two and they find and they make a frame that will go in between them and then they'll show you that frame and then the frame that they were looking at to get this frame it's it's pretty complicated stuff but it works really well in most cases in a lot of cases it can give you like damn near double the fps from the frame generation it is a really cool feature but it, in some cases it's where it works really well like when i was playing hogwarts legacy uh it worked amazingly i had i had ray tracing on ultra all the settings on ultra i was playing at 4k and i had dlss on quality with frame generation on and i was getting like 100 fps that was that's freaking awesome if i turned frame generation off i would have had around 40 or 50 fps with the dlss on quality so it, it makes a big difference while you're playing games but here's the thing a lot of people don't care about that because it is only supported in like um i don't even know i'll put up a list of games that is that supports frame generation right now uh there's not many and chances are you might not even have any of these games like in your library to play which would in turn make this feature kind of useless right now now you got to keep in mind that this technology is new to the 40 to the 40 series and will eventually probably become the regular to see in games like there's like most big game releases nowadays will have DLSS in. That's just like, that's just like to be expected. And eventually frame generation is going to be the same way and you're going to see it in damn near every game release. <laughs> so while right now it's not really a big deal because some of you guys might not even be able to use it uh, in the future once it's implemented into more games and it will probably be implemented in the games that are already released that already have DLSS, it will become a more, a much more bigger deal and a bigger reason to buy this card. Uh, once it, more games support it. Now I do think frame generation probably is the biggest thing going for this card, uh, but it does support some other things that are pretty cool, like uh, AV1 encoding, which this is going to be completely useless if you're not if you're not a content creator or if you don't do any recording on your computer. But if you do and you make videos and stuff, uh, the AV1 encoder is is good, but it has one major flaw, and that is that Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the editing software that I use, doesn't support it. I recorded a whole video two days ago and I had to re-record it because I couldn't edit the footage. And yes, there are converters that you can get to convert the footage, uh, but you had to pay for them. I didn't really want to do, I didn't really want to do that. So I just re-recorded the whole video in the old NVIDIA NVENC H.264 format and I couldn't even use AV1 encoding. Now it did look better. It looked noticeably sharper, much, much, much better than H.264. And the file size was way smaller too, so it was it was sharper, looked better than H.264, and it had a smaller file size. So it was the whole thing with AV1 was working really well. It looked looked awesome, but I couldn't edit the footage. Now I know Premiere Pro doesn't support it, but I'm not sure if DaVinci Resolve does. I'm not sure, but let's move on to some more features. It has uh, third gen ray tracing, so it does perform much better uh, with ray tracing than, than the 3070 does. And uh, yeah. There's a couple other features that Nvidia says are features for the 40 series, like uh, the RTX like super resolution video upscaler thing. But the 30 series supports that. I don't know why they're saying that's a feature for the for the 40 series cards. But yeah, those are all of the features. The big one being DLSS 3 frame generation. Now, with all this said, now that you're fully up to speed on this card, you know pretty much everything you need to know about it, all its features, all its specs, how it performs in games. What's it like to actually use the cart as just like your average Joe playing games, making videos. Uh, when you're playing games, I play at 1440p and 4K. As you can see, there is a TV behind me that I have hooked up to my computer um, that I play games on and it performs super well, super well. It's 1440p. It can do anything, anything 1440p above 60 FPS. Like I had Red Dead Redemption 2 fully maxed out. I don't mean the ma ma maxed out preset. No, I mean every single slider as far as it would go, except for resolution scale. And I was getting like 60 FPS with the DLSS on. That's that's playable. And it might say, oh, well, that's not that high. If I did that on my 3070, the game wouldn't, wouldn't, it would crash. It wouldn't even go, it wouldn't even load. <laughs> so that was really awesome. I, I tried some games with a uh, frame generation. Uh, Fra Hogwarts Legacy was awesome. Uh, What's the other one that I played? Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. That one, frame generation didn't work very good. Like when you, I was flying an F-18 in the game, and when you get going really fast, there's some ghosting behind the plane. 
So frame generation didn't work very good in that game, but still I had all the settings turned up to ultra and it performed amazingly. And as for 4K, uh, it can do 4K. If you're if you're a f someone that wants to game at 4K and you have a 3070, the 4070 can game at 4K pretty pretty damn well. I was playing some Forza Horizon 5 uh, with uh, uh, fully maxed out settings, ray tracing on at 4K, and I was getting like 70 FPS, which is okay. That's not that much, but the TV behind me has a refresh rate of 60, so 70 70 FPS was fine. So as for 4K works really well you might have to turn down some of the settings but it's still going to look super well and especially in games that have frame generation 4k is a piece of cake uh, and as for 1440p anything it can run anything except except for maybe the uh, the new overdrive mode in cyberpunk 2077 i don't have that game but i've seen some videos of people testing the 4070 against uh, cyberpunk with overdrive and it didn't perform too well but i mean that overdrive feature you're you're only getting 60 fps with a 4090 in that game with the overdrive feature so that might be the one thing that it can't really run very well but still 1440p it can handle pretty much anything but as for like doing some workstation stuff like editing photo editing uh making games <laughs> it, it performs kind of the same with editing i didn't really notice a big difference although i only edit at 1080p so I mean, I don't think I would notice a big difference. Uh, photo editing, once again, pretty much the same. And game making, if you happen to be the few people that might be watching this that uses Unreal Engine 5 to make games, <laughs> it performs much better than the 3070. Like, a lot better. <laughs> that 12 gigs of VRAM is really coming in handy when you're using Unreal Engine 5, especially when you're working with un, um, unoptimized maps. It's really awesome. So yeah, with all that said, now that you know all of the specs about the cards, the features, how it performs in game, just using it on a, on a daily basis um should you buy the card and is it worth that 600 dollars price tag well it's complicated a little bit complicated but one thing i want to get out the way right now is that if you are thinking about buying the card right now like soon after this video releases don't don't buy it yet even if you want to even if you're someone that games at 4k and does workstation stuff and makes videos and all that and you could really take advantage of all the features of features of this card don't buy it yet. And the reason for that is because there's been lots of rumors going around that this card's going to get a price cut. Um, I don't know when that is. I've been watching a bunch of videos on it. Um, but still, it's getting the rumors, which means it could happen. And I would hate to recommend this card to someone and then they buy it. And then a week later, it gets a $50 price cut or a $100 price cut. That would suck. I feel I'd feel kind of bad, honestly. <laughs> so while right now I'm not going to recommend this card to anyone until it, we know for sure either it is getting a price cut or it's not. Um, I will go over if you should buy it eventually. Um, so if you're if you're gaming at 1080p, don't. I don't care what you're doing else on your computer. If you're gaming at 1080p, wouldn't upgrade for sure. 1440p, maybe. Depends on what you're playing. If your favorite games to play are really graphic intensive ones like Cyberpunk, Red Dead Redemption 2, Hogwarts Legacy, games like that where you're gonna want to turn the settings up all the way to get the best experience possible. And frame rate really, I mean, obviously the, the higher frame rate the better, but I mean, 60 FPS in those games is perfectly fine. So in that case, I would kind of recommend buying the card eventually. But if you're gaming at 4K, I would recommend upgrading to the 4070. If you have a 3070, for obvious reasons, the 3070 really can't do 4K gaming. I mean, you have to turn them settings down pretty far if you want to do 4K gaming, especially with that limitation of the four or eight gigs of VRAM. Uh, 4K gaming just really isn't an option for the 3070. But for the 4070, oh, piece of cake, especially for games that got frame generation. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you. I, I mean, this is my first time making one of these GPU review videos. Um, especially one with a camera. This is the first time. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've never seen my face before. <laughs> I've never used a camera like this. Uh, luckily, I am a photographer, so I do have nice camera equipment um, and lighting and all that. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, I hope this helped you figure out if you should buy a 4070. Um, if it did, then hey, drop a like down below. And I'm going to make some benchmarking videos for this card, probably. Uh, depends on how this video performs. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then hey, drop a like down below and get subscribed for more content like this in the future. Maybe I'll bring the camera back more in the future. Maybe I'll add in uh, a webcam or like a face cam to my videos and all that stuff. But I don't know. But uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.